Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Jay Ziyagi, where I share my audio journey, experience, and story in audio. So today, we're gonna talk about my experience with the Triangle 40th Anniversary Magellan Duetto loudspeakers. Now, these are special speakers, not just because they sound great and look great, but because there's only 500 pairs worldwide. And that's kind of a bummer. It really is, because these are some really amazing looking speakers and sounding speakers. Now, we'll talk more about the sound and the upgrades done to the speaker because it's a 40th anniversary, there's been upgrades. But can we take a moment to look at the speaker for a minute? Now, the finish I have here is the Golden Oak, which is my favorite, but there's other special finishes for the 40th anniversary loudspeaker. Now, I have to say, they've done an extreme job in terms of finish and build on these speakers. They're just exceptional. When I first looked at these speakers, I thought this was gonna be expensive, like talking about like, you know, some $20,000, you know, speaker or something like that. That's how great the finish looks. Now, these are about $6,000 approximately, and maybe a little bit off there, plus minus three dB, joke intended, but uh, they're not bad at all in terms of the finish alone for the price you're, you know, you're paying. These are some of the best finishes I've ever seen under $20,000, like really, really high-end furniture grade. And Triangle is kind of known for that. Now, if you know a little bit about Triangle, I've reviewed some of their speakers in the past, like the BR03s or the BR02s, which has been coined Bro3 and Bro2, because why not? They're affordable speakers, amazing for the money. I mean, the tone on the Bro 3s are just excellent. And it was the highest praised speaker under, you know, $1,000 price category from my memory, which I just absolutely bro you know, blew my mind in terms of how great those speakers were in terms of tone. But if you really wanna know about the triangle sound, if you really wanna know about what triangle is about and their know-how over the years of creating many famous loudspeakers, then you really need to hear one with this tweeter system. Now it's a horn-loaded tweeter, as some people call it, or you can call it a waveguide, it doesn't really matter. This tweeter system is what makes triangles unique. Now, this speaker obviously has that, obviously, but because it's a 40th anniversary loudspeaker, it has an upgrade done to it with an all new metal alloy tweeter. That's to allow for better linearity and transparency and clarity with the tweeter on the 40th anniversary. So you get an upgraded tweeter material on these loudspeakers. Not only that, the woofer is also upgraded with better thermal capability, which allows for better power handling, which means that it can give you, again, better clarity, better detail, better bass textures without you know distortion and such, or lower distortion and such. Now, not only on the outside, but on the inside as well, you are getting a better crossover components in combination and in collaboration with the company called SCR. So both internally and in terms of drivers and the finish, you're all getting an upgrade all across the board. Now, is it just me or does the tweeter kind of remind me of the JBL bullet tweeter? Now, obviously it's not the same thing, but I can't help but reminded of that because I loved JBL speakers, especially the vintage speakers that had this bullet tweeter and it really allows that crisp and clarity to shine. Now I would say it's even better on these triangle speakers. The clarity, the snap, if you like clips loudspeakers, if you like triangles lower end speakers, these bring it up a notch in terms of just overall clarity, detail, dispersion, so sound staging, it just takes it up to another level. When I'm hearing these speakers, you know, I've, hear, I've heard a lot of high-end speakers, but I've never heard a loudspeakers that throw this type of sound stage with this much authority, meaning there's so much speed dynamics, clarity, and detail. This is definitely a speaker you sit down, you listen to it and appreciate because it draws attention to itself. Now it does disappear, meaning there is imaging going on. There's very crisp 
imaging down the center, which is unlike a horn loaded design because usually horn loaded designs don't image as well, but these image fantastically to the side, to my right, to my back. You hear things in a 3D holographic sound stage rather than a wall of sound in front of you. So if you're about that 3D holographic sound stage, then these are definitely, definitely a great choice. First of all, let me just say, when you're listening to these speakers, it's so 3D and holographic that it feels like you're listening to like a Dolby Atmos system. Like you're hearing more than two channel. That's how 3D this speaker is. And on top of that, the clarity is just so un impeccable. Like it, there's no comparison with other speakers I've had in here in terms of clarity because it's so snappy, clear, detailed. But at times it can get a little bit hot. You know, uh, some people say the word crunchy, right? It's crunchy on the top end, which means for people that like a warm, luscious, and smooth sound, this may not be the speakers for you. They do come out, you know, detailed and a little bit forward in the upper mid range and high frequency. There's a lot of air because of that elevated high frequency. The air movement is very, very good. There's very spacious uh, atmosphere going on. So there's a lot of room between instruments. It presents itself to be much larger than it, it looks. It's not a small speaker, but you know, for, for a bookshelf speaker, it is throwing a sound stage that suggests a much, much bigger speaker in terms of scale. And it really gives you a nice balanced sound in the bass and mid range. It's only a little bit tilted up in the upper and the high frequency to allow for that a little bit more of excitement and spark on the top end. Now, I don't particularly find this speaker bright, and that is important because there are times where I listen to a speaker elevated in the high frequency like this, and I get ear fatigued. Now these, I get ear fatigued in a different way where if I'm listening to it for long hours on end, then yes, these speakers give you so much information in your music, it's all there right in front of you that you're kind of like, whoa, this is, this is a bit crazy. It's a lot of information coming at me, but it's enjoyable because you're hearing all these little details in the music that dare I say, you know, you, you know, I've never heard before presented in that way. I've heard it before, but not in the spacious, you know, presentation that these speakers give. Another thing is that these speakers throw a very deep sound stage, which really helps with the spaciousness and the brilliance. Because even though high frequency is slightly elevated and can be a little bit bright to some, I feel like because there's so much space around each note and instrument, and because it's coming from such a far distance with deep soundstage and wide spacious soundstage holographicness, it's not as, you know, it's not brittle. It's not dry kind of brilliance. It's more, I would describe sweetness and, and uh, finesse. It definitely has finesse. Now in terms of bass, there is great texture to be had. It's very dynamic, it's very punchy, very clean. It doesn't linger, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you know, uh, rumble or muddy up the sound in the mid range and the high frequency. It's very much, you know, coherent but segregated in terms of how it's presenting itself so that there's no bleeding within the mid range to the bass or bass to the mid range and so on. So everything is very clean and very distinctive and coherent. So that is what these speakers do. Another thing that I would note is that amplifier matching was a little bit tricky for me and that is the biggest downside in my eyes because these are really transparent, meaning they're really transparent to the source. Meaning if you play poor recordings, these speakers will rip it apart. But if you put on a really well recorded you know, music, then these speakers bring out the best in them. So really these speakers are like a typical high-end speaker that I've experienced in the past in terms of that regard but they're also very transparent to, like I said, a source, the gear that you have going on in the system 
to where if you're plugging in like, you know, I've, I've plugged in like a 300B Walsington. Now this is a great 300B, you know, tube amplifier in my eyes, very affordable. And I recommended it with Eclipse loudspeakers, which I'll link in the description below for you to check out as well for more budget horn systems. But it was a great pairing with a speaker like Eclipse, but with this speaker, oh my God, it brings out all the flaws in the Wilsonton and really shows you that, you know, the Wilsonton is, you know, an affordable tube integrated amplifier rather than something very high end. When I hook it up to my Thalo, that's when it becomes a little bit more balanced. And then when I hook it up to something like the NAD or class D amplifiers I have had, that really makes things bright and hard and brittle for, for me to listen to. So it was really a challenge to find something I liked with it. Now, the unfortunate news is that the only thing that I really enjoyed with the speaker is the Hegel, the new Hegel amplifier. And this is an incredible beast of an amplifier. Holy crap, they output a lot of power and current and really makes these speakers shine. Now, these speakers are about 88 dB in sensitivity, which means that they're not, they're not hard to drive on paper. But from my experience of having these speakers, my God, you need some power. These do like some power. So you will need either a very powerful tube amplifier or a, you know, I would say at least a hundred watt, you know, or, or something like that tube amplifier. Maybe you'll get around with maybe 50 watts in a smaller room, but mostly I enjoyed it with the Hegel even in my space. I mean, with the Wilsonton 300B, I quickly ran out of headroom. So I started getting distortion when I cranked it up to louder volumes. Now these speakers again, shine very, very well in lower and higher volumes, but even with, you know, with the Wilsonton at lower volumes, I still didn't, didn't enjoy it as much. It sounded a little bit muted, a little bit too brittle and focused on the high frequency more than the rest of the frequencies. Now with the Hegel, my God, the bass texture, the high frequency definition, the clarity, just, just absolutely amazing pairing right there. However, one th pairing that I really did like in a different way was the Apollo. Now, the Denifer's Apollo is really earthy and you know, grounded sound, which means that the bass texture is an amazing match with the triangles, very good bass texture, but the clarity is a little bit different from the Hegel. The clarity is a little bit sacrificed, but overall a little bit more smoother sound if you're liking that more smooth sound, then it gives you all the holographicness and stuff like that. But with a little bit pulled back high frequency um, and a little bit more, I would say less of a wider sound stage. For some reason, the depth is about the same from, from what I hear, but the width is a little bit shrink down. So overall, I did like it better with the Hegel. Now the Hegel is expensive. It's about $19,000 from my understanding, which is a lot. So keep that in mind. But overall, I really enjoy these speakers with the Hegel, but also with the Apollo. So aside from its demanding quality gear that it requires to really sing and give you the full aspect of the speaker, also this really behaves like a real high-end speaker. I'm talking about speakers that I used to sell that are like $30,000 and up, like really expensive loudspeakers. These behave like that in terms of setup. Now, often people mistake, you know, oh, you know, more expensive speakers should be less finicky with setup and less finicky with amp pairings. Not the case. The higher you go, the more dedicated you are to this, the more demanding your loudspeakers will be in terms of gear and setup. So it's just like anything professional, just anything that's great in life requires work. So another thing is that the setup on the speaker, even though it's ported in the front, requires attention. Meaning too close of a, you know, a, a between the speakers will give you a more 2D sound, not the 3D sound I described. So you want to have the right distance between your speakers. Now this will vary from room to room. I've had it you know, pretty far apart, as far as I can get with these speakers, but you will have to experiment in your room, you know, just you know, inch it out, start close and then inch it out to see which position, how far away uh, 
the speakers should be relative to each other to get that more 3D holographic sound. Aside from that, though, space behind the speakers is not as finicky as I imagined. Now, initially, I had these pulled up about four or five feet initially to see how they do. And they sounded great, but they lacked a little bit of bass texture and a little bit of bass nuance, I would say. Didn't get that impact as much. So I pulled them back a little bit and close to the wall, about 1.5 feet from the wall behind it. And I got really good bass out of them, really good texture, really punchiness without mudding up anything in the range. So that was my preference. I also didn't have uh, a heavy toe in. I've had them towed in towards me slightly so that they will be hitting maybe, you know, somewhere around here. Not my shoulders, but just around maybe somewhere here. So more faced out towards the room. So that gives you a large sound stage and large sweet spot. And even then it gave me a pinpoint imaging right down the center for center imaging and that goes phantom, you know, center. So that's how I liked it. And yeah, so play, you have to play around with setup and gear with the speaker to get the maximum out of them. But just, just out of the box, they sounded great. I just had to make sure that you know, I was getting the full experience because you know the, these will be going back to triangle uh, unless I buy them, which I don't think I get to because they want to use it at their show. So I, I guess you know the moral of the story is that these are some excellent speakers if you are fortunate enough to own them. Uh, but you will need to have to do some work to make them really shine. But they sound really great out of the box as well. So overall, uh, I'm, I'm pretty demanding in terms of you know how I like my sound. So these really impressed me for the money in terms of finish, in terms of the sound, in terms of the craftsmanship and all that. I was very impressed. So that's pretty much it for me and my experience with these speakers. I hope this experience sharing has helped you. If it did, then please click the like button on this video. It helps my channel out and helps me keep making these videos for you guys and sharing my experience. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Make sure to also subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.